because I don't have good news. Oh, bad. Yes. Uh, I have to call you to tell you that the uh, executives in the company sit down. of 1993 and it was going along and on uh, Veterans Day or there or about uh, November 11th I got a telephone call from Thomas Garger the first voice you hear is the sweetest voice in the, that I know it is Franklin is on Cablevision, Long Island, Nassau County, Suffolk County. Uh, and
drop die still dues of quietness Thy coolness and thy balm Take from our souls the strain and stress And let our ordered lives confess The beauty of thy peace Breathe through the pulses of desire Thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be dumb, let flesh retire. Speak through the earthquake, wind and fire. Thy still voice of calm. John Greenleaf Whittier. Kinder hook. Well, folks, what do you think of the way we cleaned up the yard? It took about three weeks. It took about 26 hours here, about 40 hours Mr. Race, about 20 hours Mr. Race's sons. It costs about $550. Well, it is pretty nice. I'm going to uh, play for you and go back to the year 1993. Uh, Chatwick Glendora is on Cablevision, Long Island, Nassau County, Suffolk County. Uh, And I believe it started out in uh, yes, in er, in the spring of 1993, and it was going along and on uh, Veterans Day or there abouts uh, November 11th. I got a telephone call from Thomas Garger. The first voice you hear is the sweetest voice in the, that I know. It is Franklin. Good afternoon, 9185. Hi, Glennie. Hello there. Good afternoon, 9185. Hi, Glenn Dora. Tom Gawker here from Denver. Hi, Tom. How are you? Well, I've had better days, to be honest with you. Yeah, what was wrong with the, uh, well, the conference? today and I have to call you because I don't have good news. Oh, bad. Yes. Uh, I have to call you to tell you that the uh, executives in the company sit down and review your program. Uh-huh. And I have to take it off the air. Uh -huh. Why is that? Well, what they're saying is that uh, the public access
meeting with Joe Eisenhower about other things, and then that was one of the things he brought up to me. Oh, you went up to uh, Westbury? Woodbury. Woodbury. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things he brought up? Yeah, amongst mm-hmm. other things. With and how much time did he spend on it? I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Do you know when he got the decision? No, I don't. You don't know how long he had it before he told you? His head caught the program a couple of times, a couple of weeks back. And it had su- What's that? I know that some of the executives, executives in corporate had caught the program a couple of weeks back and it sparked some conversation, but then the la- that was the last I heard of it until he called me down there. And we heard that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think they had heard a fourth show or somebody, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, uh, okay, so what are they going to do? Uh, well, they just told me to... to not air it starting tonight. With no notice at all, right? Right. With no notice at all. He told you that today. Yeah. At 3.30. He told you uh, at uh, six and a half hours before. Mm-hmm. It was a little early and that might have been like 1.30 or so, but it was around that time. I was in. And he gave no notice at all. <coughs> and he didn't put anything in writing. I had no 
no say in the matter.
because it's like lobbying in tennis. You can't, uh, I can't return the ball. Uh, and then Azara, apparently I can't address him because he seems to have no say. So I have to get to the bottom of it. To the top. Oh, excuse me. To the top. And you say you don't know who is at the bottom of it. Uh, just a kid from corporate. And uh, certainly Azara isn't at the bottom of it. So we've got to find out who made this decision. Now, this is another bad thing. Nobody is taking any uh, responsibility for it.
know here. Let me see if I can remember. Oh, yeah. The little boy came home from school, and he had all A's on his report card. And his father 